Zimbabwe's President Robert Mugabe is on the way out. The ruling ZANU-PF party, Zimbabwe Africa National Union Patriotic Front, have declared that Mugabe is no longer their leader. His wife Grace has also been expelled from the party. The party have claimed that Mugabe has been a source of instability for the country and blamed him for 15 years of economic hardship. They are planning to move a motion for impeachment this Tuesday and hopefully vote him out by Wednesday. First, a little history lesson. In 1980, pro-independence leader Robert Mugabe and his ZANU party won British supervised independence elections. Mugabe was named Prime Minister and included ZAPU leader Joshua Nkomo in his cabinet. Independence was internationally recognised on 18th of April that year. In 1982, Mugabe sacked Nkomo, accusing him of plotting a coup d'etat. Between 1983 and 1987, the government's North Korean-trained 5th Brigade were deployed to crush rebellion by pro-Nkomo ex-guerrillas in Midlands and Matabele land provinces. Although there are differing opinions, it is estimated that up to 20,000 Ndebele civilians were massacred. In 1987, Mugabe and Nkomo called for peace and merged their parties to form the current ZANU-PF party. In 1998, Zimbabwe was hit by an economic crisis. It was marked by high interest rates and inflation, resulting in widespread rioting and strike action. The crisis persisted into 1999. Zimbabwe's involvement in the Congo's civil war became increasingly unpopular. The Opposition Movement for Democratic Change, the MDC party, was formed. In the year 2000, land invasions began as armed groups attacked and occupied white-owned farms. In 2001, Zimbabwe suffered food shortages due to the ongoing farm seizures, but Mugabe blamed it on drought. In 2002, Mugabe won another six-year term. Observers claimed that the result was rigged. Food shortages continued. In 2003, hundreds of companies shut down due to rising inflation and economic hardship. In 2005, Mugabe's party won the parliamentary election. Opponents claimed it was rigged. Tens of thousands of shanty dwellings and illegal street stalls were destroyed as part of a clean-up program. The US labelled Zimbabwe as one of the world's six outposts of tyranny. In 2006, Zimbabwe's annual inflation rose above 1,000% in April. New banknotes were issued with a lot less zeros to cope with the hyperinflation. 2007 saw power cuts as electricity was diverted to agriculture. There was a run on shops as goods disappeared from shelves. Zimbabwe imported 60,000 tonnes of wheat to ease bread shortages after millers ran out of grain. In 2008, the MDC party claimed victory in the presidential and parliamentary elections. However, a runoff went ahead and Mugabe was declared the winner. MDC leader Morgan Changarai and President Mugabe signed a power-sharing agreement. Later that year, there was a cholera epidemic and Zimbabwe's healthcare system collapsed. In 2009, Changarai was sworn in as Prime Minister. Mugabe called for a new start to relations with the West. MDC accused the government of persecution and violence against its members. In 2010, a new law forced foreign-owned businesses to sell a majority stake to locals. Zimbabwe resumed diamond sales despite accusations of abuse in its diamond fields. WikiLeaks claimed that Grace Mugabe profited from illegal diamond trading. In 2011, President Mugabe said that he would run in the next elections. He condemned the power-sharing government as a monster. In 2012, political violence was on the rise, with MDC complaining that its rallies had been repeatedly shut down. Prime Minister Changirai threatened to pull out of the unity government, citing violence against his party's members. In 2013, President Mugabe gained a seventh term in office and his ZANU-PF party won three quarters of the seats in parliament. The opposition MDC dismissed the polls as a fraud. In 2014, President Mugabe sacked Vice President Joyce Mujuru and seven other ministers after accusing them of being involved in a plot to kill him. Emerson Mnangagwa was sworn in as the new Vice President. In 2016, police dispersed demonstrators near parliament, with placards reading, President Mugabe must go. And finally, in 2017, Brigadier General Moyo announced on TV that the military is taking over, but that it is not a coup. Days later, Mr Mugabe addressed the nation, saying he is still president. And that's Zimbabwe's history in a nutshell. Robert Mugabe has taken on the African strongman role. He's stolen land from legitimate farmers. He's promoted violence and vote rigging to stay in power. He's kept himself and his associates rich while his citizens were facing food shortages and financial ruin. He's brought Zimbabwe to its knees. He's not deserving to be its leader. 
It's amazing that at 93, he was still in power. Anyway, it's all coming to an end now. Mugabe has lost the support of his people and the military. Former Vice President Emerson Mnangagwa is set to become the new president. Although he has been a long-time ally of Mugabe, it's said that he will focus on rebuilding ties with the outside world and stabilizing an economy in freefall. I wish the Zimbabwean people the best of luck. I hope that the expulsion of Robert Mugabe will bring about a new era for their country. There was no other option really. Although Mugabe was once seen as an independence hero, he has slowly but surely turned into a tyrant, a despot. He has been corrupted by power. He has embezzled millions of dollars from his people. It's reported that he has amassed over one billion dollars in wealth. Now it is all coming to an end for Robert Mugabe. He's finally getting his just desserts.